Hey, I am live. Good evening, everybody. It's me, Lisa Concepcion, Facebook Live. Boom, coming to you live from the bedroom. Bow, chicka, bow, bow. Yeah, whatever. Anyway, the Tazer was up on the bed, but he bounced. He's around here somewhere. So, good evening, everybody. Giving people a chance to jump on the Facebook Live before I begin chatting about my adventures and um, specifically my time when I first moved to Miami, probably like two or three years in, and I um, needed a job. I needed the J-O-B, so I'm going to get into that and uh, just, you know, my journey and hopefully in sharing it, you will get a few nuggets of insights and wisdom and, you know, things that you would probably do the opposite of <laughs> in your own life. <laughs> and things that if you did, camaraderie! There's always um, good company in the shit show of life. And we find peace in that when we find that we're not alone and that others have gone through their things too in their life. So, I'm a little throaty. I like vitamin C. Rocking that sucker. I got the orange juice. There it is. No vodka in that. So, um, alright. I'm going to get rolling. So basically, thank you everybody for um, signing on. I'm seeing all these people coming on, coming on, coming on! Because they want to know about the Grand Cardone. And um, I'm about to get into it. So, the year is, I'm going to roll with 2012. I decided to start a blog back then called Lisa Takes Miami. And it was a New York take on my life in Miami. And it gave me a good opportunity to really learn a lot about the city that I lived in. So what better way to explore restaurants and events and meet some really cool people than to write about it. So I was doing PR as best as I could scraping by, getting some bucks into my life so I could pay my bills, and for the most part, dipping into my personal savings, which I was able to stash a bunch of liquid cash away, and then I brought it with me to Miami, plus money from high wardrobe malfunction, money from the sale of my house, and I put all that together, and boom, came to Miami. So I was living off of that money. And um, eventually that money was going to run out. And um, luckily it did not. So I started to see it going low and low and low. So I was like, all right, this blogging thing is cool and all, but it is not getting me my paper. So I said, all right, time to get serious. And time to, yet again try to find a public relations or marketing job here in Miami. Not an easy thing to do. Um, especially from coming from New York. There aren't any, aren't any big agencies down here, like on the scale of New York, which I was used to. And, you know, the whole, like, corporate thing and the big brands and all that. And, you know, it just wasn't happening for me. And... You know, it was a lot of uh, smaller agencies, a lot of junior level people, and they wanted to pay you like nothing. And the salaries down here were abysmal in, in marketing. It's just ridiculous. If you're going to do marketing, and here's a little tip out there for anybody who's at U of M or any of these, you know, Nova or FIU or whatever, studying marketing, PR, whatever. If I had any advice to give any college kid out there, regardless of what they're studying, I would tell them, upon graduation, learn click funnels. Learn how to create click funnels. I'm not even kidding you. Like, I'm going to learn this, and it's going to be how I'm going to become a multimillionaire. Anyway, speaking of multimillionaire, I decide I need to get around some big thinking people. So I start putting my resume out there. I get in touch with Headhunter, and I end up on his mailing list. And we have an interview, and all is well. And he's like, you know, Lisa, when it's when it, a job hits for me that's a fit for you, I'll reach out to you. But in the interim, 
puts me on his mailing list, and every week I would get this, like, email bulletin that just kind of said, like, everything that he was looking to place, jobs that he was looking to place. And one day he sends me one, and in this list is this little skinny little ad, cryptic, and it said something like, New York Times best-selling author seeks public relations director to manage branding, PR campaign, whatever. So, like, I did this for people. Like, I knew what it was to make an expert stand out in his <laughs> within the press. So, I was like, cool, this job is, like, I could do this in my sleep, hungover, and, like, awesome. Like, why not? Let's do it. So, blindfolded. And, you know, spun three times. I'm like, this is an easy, easy job. So I said to the guy, listen, I have all this experience. I can completely work with this guy. I went online. I Googled him. I researched his YouTube. I saw his energy. I was like, oh, my God, this, this is like I'm supposed to work with this guy. And uh, his name was Grant Cardone. And definitely Google him. Check out his Facebook. Check out all of his social media. He's everywhere. Super, super inspiring guy. Um, basically started with nothing. He was um, kind of like, you know, lost in his life when he was like in his 20s, decided to start to um, sell cars, got really, really good at selling cars, really good, um, figured out a method of sales, got amazingly well at sales of cars specifically, so much so that other car dealerships started to hire him to like teach their teams how to sell. So then he started to work his way up and up and up, doing sales training for car um, salespeople. And he turned it into a business, and he codified it, made it a platform where he was selling um, sales training online. So he took a bunch of money that he was making doing that, save, 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 invested it into a property, and then he started to break into multifamily real estate. And that's really where, like, he makes, like, gazillions of dollars. And then also his sales training technologies. And now he's pretty much marketing himself these days as just straight-up entrepreneur. And, um, you know, I, it's awesome to see, like, where his brand has gone since I worked for him. Because when I started working for him in 2013, his branding was, like, all over the place. Like, he was presenting like a real estate agent from the 90s like just cheesy font like pictures no pictures like everything was just plain like it did it it wasn't translating who he was so you know i i went in there and i just like boom helped him but let me tell you how i actually got hired and met him for the first time and sherry and like all the people who were like my work family for like a year and a half so the year is 2012, I meet with this headhunter, and I tell him, I can do this job in my sleep. Like, you have to send my resume to this Grant Cardone cat. He seems awesome. So he says, Lisa, here's the thing. It's a really hard job to place. I've been trying to place this job for a while. And I'm like, it is? Like, yes! Like, that's what I want. I like the stuff that's like, not everybody can do it. Picky people you know, want a certain kind of vibe, and I was like, awesome. And then he said, you know, he comes from L.A., he brought his whole business here to Miami, and, you know, he has kind of a different mindset. He's very go, 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 and it's very hard in Miami. And I'm like, I know, I'm from New York. Nobody here is go, go, go. Send me. I'll be great. So he's like, that's right, you're from New York. Oh, my God, you're a total type A, like, go 50,000 miles an hour. This is good. You'll be good. So then he says, however, there's another obstacle. He requires people to send 60 minute, I'm sorry, 60 second videos of themselves, like quick selfie video telling him who they are and what benefit they can bring to his company and why they'd want to work for him. So I was like, all right. I'm like, dude, I'll send you two videos. I'll send you one video of Lisa, like, legit, and then one of me, like, all buttoned up in corporate in case he rolls that way. So you could pick based on what you know of your client, send it in, and whatever. So he sends it in. He picks the one. He sends it in, and, like, 20 minutes later, he calls me, and he's like, they want to meet you. And I'm like, of course they do. What do I do? Where do I go? So he tells me. And he says, the first meeting is going to be with this woman named Sherry. So I'm like, okay, perfect. And I'm typical, like, in New York mode. 
I get my outfit out. I'm like, what am I wearing? Like, totally appropriate. Nice, nice. Get my resumes nice and printed, all good. And I'm ready to roll. So I go in, I meet with Sherry. We hit it off awesome. Interview was like an hour and 15 minutes. We're chit chatty chat. Get along great. She's a doll. La la la. All is well. I leave there psyched. So she's like, I'm going to talk to Grant and we're going to probably have you back to meet him. So I'm like, wonderful. So <coughs> have a cold. So, excuse me. Um, she calls me back very quickly or emails me, I forget. Anyway, we set up another meeting and this time it's with Grant. So now, again, I'm like, okay, pick out appropriate outfit, going to be, like, meeting with, like, Grant Cardone, this is, like, really cool, and I knew, basically, what I researched about him, that he was this sales guy, and, like, kind of knew a little about his businesses based on what I saw online, and I was all fired up, so I meet him, and I didn't realize at the time the kind of compliment that he would pay me that, like, now, fast forward, like, four years, three years, I, I think of this compliment every day and it drives me to get really good at sales for my own coaching business. And he said to me during the interview, he asked me, did you ever do sales? And I said, well, I never did sales like completely commission full on. I did sales in the form of public relations because like everything is a sale basically in life. And so even if you're, you know, trying to get your friends to eat sushi and they all want to get pizza and you're trying to sell them on sushi and you convince them and they buy into the sushi, that's a sale. Congratulations, you made a sale and, you know, the spicy tuna is your commission. So that's the analogy. So basically I said to him, well, you know, in PR I've been selling um, stories to the news and, col and forming them and building rapport with media and giving them a value, something that they can use that would be good for their news organization and whatever. So I kind of understand the principles of sales, however, as it pertained to PR. His deal was a whole other animal. So it was a very, very cool compliment because he said, wow, I, I'm surprised that you haven't ever done sales. Like you, you seem like a natural at it. And I think it was just such a mindset that I had, which I'm in the process of handling, which had to do with money. And it was that I always went for the comfort of a steady salary. I didn't like the erratic nature of sales and commissions. It just made me, it had to do with my own like money, nervousness, and just not good. So like when you do sales, you write your own ticket. You could like be a multimillionaire. If you figure out like a method of selling something, getting really good at something and then selling it, you could do whatever. I mean, people do it all the time and get very rich at the whatever it is that they do. So this was the case with Grant Cardone. He got amazing at sales, figured out how to teach sales to other people, figured out how to do it in a way that replicated himself so he could teach like massive amounts of people at once while working on other stuff. So that's the key. Anyway, hires me. Boom! I'm like, oh my god, he thinks I have a, nice, a good attitude. Like, this is so cool. And so, done, I'm hired. So I'm like, holy crap, this is amazing. So now I'm Grant Cardone's director of PR, marketing. I get in there, and it's a new company. I mean, there was like a handful of us, and there was still construction being done on the office. And it was true, legit, someone moving his company from L.A. to Miami to grow it and blow it up big. And it was amazing. It was like I got there, and, and I had to basically create my job as it pertained to what he needed at the time and I was there about a month and I like assessed everything that was going on and I was like okay I'm coming at him with a PR plan with how I envision his brand looking feeling what we're going to do with videos what we're going to do with you know um his overall website the content all kinds of stuff it was fantastic so we got started, we got to work, and I just got into this groove, and it was amazing, amazing working there. He was filming a reality show at the time, like a pilot. He was trying to, you know, just get himself known, and one of the things that I learned right off the bat was something that I absolutely agreed with, like my whole life, and it is that if you are not getting attention for yourself or your business, it's like you're unethical. It's as if you're hiding 
all your gifts and your goodness that you can share and serve the world with, and it's completely unethical. So I loved that um, that mantra, if you will, of like get yourself attention. Um, don't care about what anybody thinks. You're going to have haters no matter what. But if you have a purpose and you have a clear intention and your goal is to help people and you believe you could, sell yourself to the masses on every single social media platform you could possibly relate to, get to, whatever. So, like, Grant Cardone right now is, like, I guess he's, like, I don't know, 57 probably by now, 58. The man is Snapchat, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Like, I follow him still on all his stuff. It's awesome. Like, I still learn from him. He's great. And um, his wife also is on there. Jerry Glantz also on there. Like, all the people, like, the core people from when I started working there, they're still there, and they're elevating their presence on social media. So, it's, like, it's really cool to see, like, where everybody is. But one of the things that was really, really, really interesting with Grant, and this is, you know, public knowledge, it's out there, he's a devout Scientologist. And so just the same as like if you're working for a company and the owner is Jewish, there will be holidays that they observe and people are leaving early and, you know, doing their thing. So like I was used to that from New York. So to me, it's like one spiritual practice is their own business and whatever, like rock it out, whatever you need to, you know, connect to something greater, um, go for it. So one of the things that I did while working with Grant was I went to explore on my own just to see what it was about Scientology. And I did about like six, maybe five, five or six different courses in Scientology. And they were really, really fascinating. They helped me definitely to say that they didn't. They totally helped me. They shifted something in my mind. Really, really interesting. The thing that really didn't work for me, though, is I didn't really have time to, like, process the information before they were trying to, like, get me into the next course. And I'm one of those people, like, I learn by application. So I like to read a book, then maybe listen to the audio, take notes, apply it to my life, and then see how I feel, and then decide what other things I need to learn from there. So... Whatever reason, like I said, like everybody's spiritual practice is their own thing. And for me, it wasn't a fit. But but what I did realize was that I needed something. I needed some kind of spiritual practice at that point in my life. I absolutely was not in a good place. Um, I was still in the limbo of my marriage. I was having all this hope that my ex-husband and I at the time we were still married we were separated but I wanted to get back together and I had this hope that you know that would happen and we were still hanging out and still um you know seeing each other but it was like we weren't having sex but we were like dating and like not really dating but like just hanging out together a lot and doing a lot of like stuff that we would do when we were married but not it was emotionally confusing I highly highly recommend not doing this to yourself relationship limbo is not good at all it's very like not good emotionally anyway that said i'm dealing with this and i'm working with grant which was awesome because like during the day it took my mind completely off of my life like i literally found all new friends working there i was working like elbow to elbow with grant and sherry every day um really being creative um, helping him with his branding. I mean, it was fantastic. It was fantastic work. Really super cool friends. We would, like, hang out outside of work, go grab lunch together. It was great. It was really, really great. High point of my, like, PR career for sure. So the spiritual practice thing is important because without it, you're a little bit, or a lot of it, at least in my case, disconnected from your inner source, your inner being, God, divinity, whatever it is that resides in all of us, right? God, to me, isn't some dude with a beard that's sitting on a tree judging everybody, sitting up in the clouds, looking down with his beard, being like, oh, look at you, you're a liar, and look at you, he's playing with his beard, 
being like, oh yeah, you're going to burn an eternal pit of hell. It doesn't work that way, right? So God is within all of us, source, divine, light, whatever you want to call it, right? So I was very disconnected with that. I always believed in something higher. I always believed in, you know, something pulling the strings, the universe, that there were no accidents, that we manifest things and we have power within us to really think our way to anything we want. I always did believe that, but I wasn't acting it. I wasn't I wasn't aware. That's what it was. It was my awareness, my consciousness was not elevated at all. And I was still living very conditionally, looking outward for solutions that really only resided within myself. And trying to make people behave in a certain way to appease me and that's a trap so I was still living in that life and in that head and in doing the Scientology my mom was on the phone with me one day and she's like you know Lisa ten cuidado con este Scientology meaning in Spanish be careful with this Scientology thing and I'm like no ma I, I know what it is and you know I tell you I went and it was interesting but it isn't for me, and I. but I it will say it inspired me to look for something, some kind of spiritual practice. And a couple of years prior, I went to a seminar about Kabbalah, and that I liked. And I even got a book by Karen Berg, and she's a total badass. I'll get into her deal in a minute. And she basically, I mean, all right, anyway. Went to see her speak, was totally moved, loved it, bought her book, or got her book at the event for free, I forget. Read the book, like, that week. And then I shelved it. And fast forward four years, and now I'm working with Grant Cardone, so, um, Kabbalah comes to me again. And this is where I start to see how divine the universe truly is, and that the universe is always looking out for us, and will serve up exactly what we need, when we need it, if we ask and believe that we're worthy of having it. So at that point in time, I said to my mom, you know, Ma, I tell you, I, it's not the Scientology. That's not my thing, but I do need a thing. And I'm going to figure it out because I do feel like I need something spiritual in my life. And so my mother said to me, well, pray on it. You know, I was raised Catholic. I did all the sacraments. I did the whole deal. I never bought into that either. It never felt right to me, even as a kid. I wasn't buying it. I, it just never made sense to me. I'm like, where did the dinosaurs fit in? I don't get it. What about the monkeys? Like, it doesn't make sense. So, you know, I just didn't get the Bible. I got, like, I didn't get anything of it. So I um, went to, um, uh, on the phone with my mom, and this is what happens. I get off the phone with my mom, I go on my computer, and my computer is running a little funky. So I'm like, you know, maybe it's because I haven't emptied my, you know, spam folder or like just cleared out some email. I go in my, I get the intuitive hit to go clean out my spam folder. I go in it, and sure enough, right at the top it says, Intro to Kabbalah, $50, 10 weeks. I'm like, what? I click it open, I read what it has to say, it speaks to my soul, and I am on board, let's roll Kabbalah. And I only knew of Kabbalah based on what I saw in that meeting, it felt good to me, that seminar that I went to to listen to Karen Berg speak, and um, the other meetings that I had, and, and just things that I had seen about it online, things I've read, and, you know, it just was very, um, it, it just called at me. It called, something called me to it. So I go. I loved it. I got right into it. It resonated with me profoundly. And really what Kabbalah is, and people say, oh, don't you have to be Jewish to do Kabbalah? No, you do not. It is very connected to the, um, the, the lunar calendar, the calendar of the year, zodiac cycles. Um, but deeper than that, it has to do with corrections and life after life after life that you come back here to learn a bunch of stuff and connect with people to learn and to teach and there are um, different universal principles things that happen where when you're just stagnant and you're chill in your life life and the universe will present an upheaval to help you grow there were just a lot of things about Kabbalah that just really, really resonated with me. I totally recommend the book, True Prosperity. I have it here. It's definitely a reread now that I'm in the head that I'm in. And I read it and loved it. And again, I got further and further into Kabbalah. It just felt great. 
It was a very, um, just a pleasant, nice, positive environment. And it just, you know, for anybody who's done Kabbalah, I've gone to the Kabbalah Center here in Miami. It's a sense of community. Everybody's cool. Everybody's just so, like, looking out for each other. Um, it's just great. It's great. So I practice Kabbalah. I do still. There are definitely methods and, and technologies to it that I still practice. Um, I was going to the Kabbalah Center, like, every Monday for, like, a year and a half. And I was also going to other meetings and things at the center. And it just, you know, really put me on a path towards looking inward and being really mindful of the connectivity that I have to everybody on the planet and how we're all really connected and how we drift in and out of our lives. And, um, you know, there are blessings and things that you can manifest and attract. And that was really what got me first going in the, the, the um, study of law of attraction. And since my work with Kabbalah up until present day, I'd say I have about probably like over 1,100 hours of study of Law of Attraction with Kabbalah, with Abraham Hicks, with other, you know, people on Louise Hay, Hay House, Wayne, um, Wayne Dyer, a um, bunch of other, you know, people that I um, just really dove in and read and started listening to their... Um, their beliefs and, and what it is that they practice and stuff. So, like I said, I mean, when you're low and low and you need to find something within, you know, you need some kind of spiritual practice to help you clear your head, dial into yourself where the answers truly are. And if there's a way to connect with a community to do that, um, it's, you know, it's great. So, yeah, I see Sunny on here saying, thanks for the reminder, Kabbalah, I keep putting it off. I, you know what? I will make a point to meet you at the Kabbalah Center if you're in Miami. And um, I, I'd love to, you know, actually take in another center and reconnect with some of my friends there too. Get another red string on my wrist. Keep all the evil eyes off of me. And, uh, you know, especially now that I'm looking to do some big things in my business. So, you know, I, um, I have to say, like, there are certain things that I definitely learned in that time of of going into Kabbalah and um, really the journey of my life in that time and the upheaval that that opened up to. I mean, I within the first three months of going into Kabbalah, I attracted the full Zohar. Like, it was gifted to me. And the Zohar are these books. They're written in Aramaic, and you scan the letters. You can't read anything. It gives, like, you can't understand anything unless you can read um, Aramaic and or Hebrew, and then they have the English interpretation, and that's even more confusing than anything else. But it's for the pure energy of the books, and I will tell you, from the second those books entered my house, my life went through a complete clearing and cleansing that took from 2014 to 2015 to 2016. It was truly a two-year cycle of getting unstuck. So when people ask me, what was the thing that got you unstuck, I would say 100% Kabbalah. There was some kind of wuji going on with my energy and that spiritual practice that completely cleared space for the life that I am to create, the purpose that I am to have, that I discovered, which is doing these calls, coaching people, um, using my story for service, helping people get through divorce, helping people get through breakups, um, especially breakups with codependency and narcissistic partners, um, really healing from that because it's definitely a special breed of healing. Um, what else? Helping people just find self-love and not live conditionally. That's another big thing I help people with. Like if you're single and you're doing you, all love it, all the power to you, amazing, I did it, best thing ever, and it was getting to a place where I didn't really care if I was with someone or not, literally, I worked so hard to completely flip my script on that from, I am only worthless if, I mean, I am only with worth if I am in a relationship, my self-worth is based upon the relationship I'm in, my title as girlfriend, fiance, wife, if I don't have a title, I have nothing. And 
when I had my name changed back to Lisa Concepcion, because I was Lisa Concepcion on Facebook, like the whole deal, but like with my life, on my license, my passport, my bills, my, my whole deal was my married name. Something so simple, like changing my name. I thought that I was going to be all like, you know, emotional about it because it was rough. It was, you know, this was, these were just tasks that I had to do, that I had to get through to get me comfortable with just being myself, me. And when I saw my name on my license and I just looked at it and it just said Lisa Concepcion and I had not had my license say Lisa Concepcion in, in, in like over a decade more. Like it was 1998. So here it is 2016 and I'm like, holy crap, like I am Lisa Concepcion. The end and the beginning because who the hell knows what I'm going to create next. Um, but I know it's something big, and I love that these videos are going to exist so that all of you great people can be like, I was Facebook friends with that girl. I used to watch her, her videos every week, and I used to go party with her, and I'm still friends with her. And see, that's what I want. I want to have five years from now all these people in this thread being like, Lisa, oh my God, like I totally was there when it all started. So that is very super cool. If I could have that, that'd be cool. But the other thing is, I have a lot of people actually, I want to take a second to read, um, you know, some comments that people are having. First of all, thank you to everybody for tuning in. Awesome. And thank you for your comments. I'm going to read all of them at the end. I always do. And I'll respond back. So Tracy Ann, who's my girl from Island Trees High School, um, she said, I flipped my whole mindset. Yeah, it's 100% it. And I still am now taking that same uh, mind shift where I did from like relationships in that sector of my life and now I'm applying it to my money mind. Like I want to flip my mindset, bash through some limiting beliefs about money, things that are holding me back from the good fortune that I know awaits me because I believe it, I've created it in my mind, I know what it looks like, I know what that life is, and so now I just have to like align with it, and to do that I need to get these blocks out of the way, and just, you know, not make it such a big thing, and, and make it just little baby steps, and have faith that I'm going to, you know, I'm going to get there. Um, so I just want to give some shout outs. Um, Christian, Licole, Tracy Ann, whoop whoop, my friend Ada was on there, um, I see like all these, oh my god, so many people, I'm just gonna like see if I can scroll, um, Angie Broderick, Rachel McGinnis, there's Sonny, David Ford Jr., John Ambrosio, Livio Me, Erica C., so many great people, I'm so excited to see all you guys on here, this is awesome, and I'm hoping I'm giving you something of value. Um, like I said, it doesn't have to be Kabbalah, it doesn't have to be, you know, granted Scientology, um, inspired me to find a spiritual practice, inspired other things too, like let's bring it back to Grant, working with Grant Cardone, like if you're out there and you want to get around like a really solid mentor in business, and even if you don't like meet Grant, there's so much information that he is so generous in putting out there, and like the teachings that he gives. It's amazing. And I remember when I was working with him, he was a little bit insular. He was a little like to, he was a little to himself and he was just like working his little empire and whatever. And he was a little bit also mistrusting. Um, and one of the things that, I don't know, it was just gut. It was just instinct. But it, but I told him one day, I suggested that he connects with other people who are interested in entrepreneurship and it started to be the thing where like podcasting was big and webinars started to come on the scene and I was noticing that every time I would try to get Grant Cardone on mainstream media they wanted like nothing to do with this guy and I mean I get it he's very outspoken very you know had a social media presence already that maybe mainstream media wouldn't really jive with he was very, you know, in your face, and he's the type of personality like me where online, that is your place. That is your home. That is your place. Mainstream media, maybe, but 
not easy. Not easy. It's a, it's, they, they want a certain kind of cookie cutter kind of mold. And he just busts out that mold. I'm the same. I am what I am. Authenticity is everything to me. Grant, similar. So I said, you know, like attracts like. Like, why don't, like, why don't we try getting you around some podcasters who are all about entrepreneurship? Let's try to see what Entrepreneur Magazine even, because he was a contributor to them. I was submitting articles, and then I started to, to like, get quicker with submitting articles on his behalf that we would collaborate on. So I was writing for Grant Cardone for Entrepreneur and Wells Fargo, um, American Express Open Forum, like all these different websites. And Elite Daily even. Like we would collaborate on such cool stuff and then like I would write it, he would edit it, we would, you know, put it out there and just, you know, serve the people in that way. And in doing that, I realized like for my own business you just have to put out content, dude. You have to put yourself out there. You have to be real. You have to keep it real. Grant did it. I can do it too. You know, just give from a place of truth and connect with people and then tell them what you're able to give them. I mean, look, anybody watching, if you have somebody that you know or if you're that person and you're going through some funky shit within your relationships even if you're on your own, you don't even have to be in a relationship. You could be single and being like, dude, I'm single and I want to crush some things in my life. I have some major goals and I need accountability and I need to talk to somebody every week to tell me that like, it's all going to be cool. It's all right to be forward thinking in my goals and, you know, just have that person, that extra sounding board that you can't really sometimes get with your friends and your family. Sometimes you need that like separate professional person who's going to come at you and give it to you straight and um you know that's what i do for people people going through divorce i'm your listening ear i come at you with some questions i get you to kind of sort things out if you're single and you're looking for love no big deal dude everybody's looking for love but you got to come at it with a strategy and you got to come at it with a clear uh purpose and head of what it is you want so that you could focus on that Find it within yourself to be what it is you want. Believe that that's there and bring it into your existence. I actually just got a message now from somebody saying, I can't meet the right guy. Hit me up. I can help you. I can help you find what's right within you, that person that you know you want to attract. This girl needs to stop blowing up my phone and get on the Facebook Live, honey. So, um, so... I mean, look, I think that and I feel that everybody is perfect where they are. When I was working with Grant Cardone, it had to happen. There were things that I had to learn from this man. There were things that, you know, I had to experience, things within myself that I had to get real about. And, you know, our time together was about, I want to say, like 16 months and, um, you know, it was, it was great. I look back at it with, you know, a lot of positivity, a lot of um, awareness of where I was then versus where I am now. And it's only beginning. And my goal is to someday reconnect with Grant, be a guest on one of his shows. I like the one where he's driving around in his car. It would be kind of full circle with me because I did videos where I was driving around in my car, although his car is like a Rolls Royce, um, or even maybe on his airplane, the little 10X plane that he's got zooming around, which is awesome, um, and do an interview with him on his show when I am a multimillionaire coach helping people in the similar way that he does with a platform where people can learn online right from their bed, just like I am now on their little iPads or their phones, learning about how to better themselves. So I am working on that platform. I'm hopeful to bring it to you guys, if not by the end of the year, early 2018. I'm getting my certification in coaching. I'm going at this legit. I believe in my message. I know that there is something there to share with people. And I appreciate all of you guys on this thread. Man, look at all these people chilling. You could be anywhere on a Monday night and you're choosing to spend mm -hmm. your time with me. So I'm much grateful, most grateful for that. Um, I'm going to take a swig of my orange juice. I don't know if you heard it in me. I'm a little um, throaty 
and like my boobs are like booming. I don't know what's up. But yeah, OJ, getting my vitamin C right. Mm. I'm going to give a shout out to my friends at Trop50. You want to send me some juice or some coupons for juice? Anybody out there doing the PR for Tropicana? I'm, I love the Trop 50. I'm all about the low calorie. Mm. Mm. Feels so good on my throat. Oh, my God. I don't even know. Can somebody on there um, give me a time check? Wow. It's like 1045. I went over. Sorry. Sorry, you guys. Man, I guess maybe I could even go an hour with these. But um, I'm going to bid you all good night. I'm going to show you right here who's on the floor. There go to Tazer. There he is, my little boy. So good night, everybody. I hope I gave you some uh, nuggets of, you know, some inspiration, some stuff that maybe you could apply to your own life. Like I said, it's not about what spiritual path you go on, just as long as you pick one that resonates with you, that brings you close to you inside, that you get the answers that reside within. And it's something you could do every day in some small way. So be blessed, blessed, and be happy, be healthy, and attract abundance always. Good night, everybody. Bye.